The following is a production of the University of Minnesota, driven to discover. Well, what are you studying in college and what plans do you have for the future? So I'm studying teaching, primary teaching, um, to become a primary school teacher. So I'll be able to teach children from early years, so foundation years, we call it here in Australia, all the way through to year seven. Plans for the future will be hopefully to become a primary school teacher. Interesting. It's been a great occupation for me over the years. Uh, Why did you decide to become involved as a study group leader? Initially, I think I did it because I wanted to have an opportunity to practice my teaching skills. I think that was initially why I did it. And also because I think I like to help other people. I think that's just me. I like to help other students not have to have, sort of mitigate some of those challenges that you have when you're starting at university. Well, there's been a lot of study group leaders over the years who have decided to become teachers because of their experience. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'd say probably a third of them who thought they were going to do something else now want to become teachers then. Mm-hmm. Well, what course or courses do you support? Why mm-hmm. are those challenging for students? Okay, so over the, my three years as a leader, I've covered lots of courses. Um, learning and cognition, so that's looking at brain development and childhood development. Um, obviously, the reason for that one for doing the past program for that is that Students have a high failure rate. It's a first year course and they're expected to write at an academic level. And I think they really get challenged with that. So they're having to understand and conceptualise theory, but then also have to write about it at an academic level. And it, for often for these students, it's their first time really doing that in a, you know, at a university standard. Uh, what's one or two activities that you have done during your study sessions that you think have been really effective in helping the students? Probably my favourite ones are the icebreakers. I always love the icebreakers because I have a lot of students that being teachers, a lot of English um, as a second language. So they come with their own groups but have struggles um, connecting with other students. So I do a lot of icebreaker activities, musical chairs, so you've got to sit next to someone different, that kind of thing. And then probably my favourite um, activity to do is this, what I call a, a letterbox activity where every student gets to write a question down on a piece of paper that they're too afraid to ask. We put it in the box, then we ask, we pull the box open and we answer the questions. But no one has to have, it's, there's a level of anonym, anonymity to it. So oh, that's very have, clever. Yeah. Uh, where did you get the ideas for those activities? I um, actually did it with a bunch of year seven kids uh, in a lesson we had to learn about the human body and they were really nervous about talking about parts of the human body. So I saw it done with year sevens and thought, what a great way to do that in class. See, one of the reasons why I asked that question is almost never does the person say, I learned this doing a training workshop for my job. And that's no disrespect to the training program, but they always find these ideas in other places. Mm, I think also because students go to lots of different past sessions, they may see more of those training program type activities and being a more developed leader I think it's my responsibility to be a little bit more creative about what I bring to session. My final question for you and I know this one's the one the audience enjoys the most is well, what are you personally and professionally getting out of this? You've kind of give us kind of hinted that answer to us, mm-hmm. but you know give this is kind of your last uh, response for our listeners. What are you getting out of all of I think that this has taught me how to be a better leader. I think that I have always been able to connect with people, but not always understood how to really um, develop leadership in other people. So I've always been successful in my own professional career before I came to university. But I think this is, being at university has really taught me how to connect to other people. And the past program in particular has really allowed me to really reflect and question why I do the things I do. Well, outstanding, Claire. Thanks for sharing with us, and I know that our listeners out here appreciate your words. So best wishes as you continue. Thank you, David.